The Bible is very clear. It says if you accept the mark of the beast, you're damned. Don't put any mark or cutting. Do you know in the Old Testament it says you don't put any cutting in your flesh at all? Yes. Don't some uh, Baptists take uh, get uh, the ash put on their foreheads or uh, lint for ash lint? Lent is when they do it. But I don't some Baptists do that. I don't think any Baptists do. Lutherans do. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if Methodists do, but Lutherans do, and Catholics do. Now, if they do, it's, it's a minority of them. And the point is, is that it doesn't come from Christianity. This is the way the worship of the sun god was done, which Rome has brought into and, and made it commonplace. And here we have the quotes... Uh, all the way back to early, the first couple hundred years, where this guy was saying, how, you see how he's superstitiously saying, whether we tie our shoe or we take a bath, we should always make a sign of the cross. Have you ever seen somebody that's so superstitious that does that all the time? They're so superstitious. And that's exactly what it is. It's superstition. And it's relying on something that the Bible never said to rely upon. All I'm suggesting is don't put, don't let anybody make you think that you're joining the side of Christ by getting a tattoo of a cross on your forehead. Because it doesn't belong there. What they will tell you, and we'll see it in a minute, but what they will tell you is in the book of Ezekiel it actually says, "Go, angels were sent. And they were told to set a mark on the forehead of all of those that would be saved. What about Palm Sunday? You go get the palm. The palm, put the palm, make the palm into a cross? Yeah, they do that too. I'm talking about a permanent mark here. I'm not even talking about the ashes. I'm saying there's coming a time. Remember in history there were the Crusades. And basically, it was the Muslims against the Catholics, right? Or what they called the Christians. There's going to be a line drawn in the future. There's going to be a... The Pope is working on this right now. This is, this is happening right now. He's trying to unify all the churches together. And there's coming a time where he's going to say, there's going to be a line drawn, prove whose side you're on. I'm warning, I'm warning, don't get any kind of mark on your forehead. Don't get any kind, because you don't know enough about what's going on. But there's three things going on that John said. There will be a name, a number, and a mark. Hmm? Or on your right hand. Exactly. And we've talked about, in the past, we've talked about the chip, right? We even talked about the visa tonight. We talked about this chip that they want to put in your hand. Right? And lots of people believe that that has to do with the market of the market of Antichrist. I believe in the Western world that is. But see, there's the Antichrist system is much bigger than anything that you've imagined. And what's going to happen is you have, is today you have a big competition between the Western world and Islam. There's going to be a great destruction that comes. And people are going to get really scared of the things that are coming on the earth. And I think we're going to be around to see this. We're going to see some of this destruction caused by the war. And it could be any day. It could happen every day. And then they're going to say, we need to have peace. Peace between the Christians and the Muslims. And someone will orchestrate that peace. And the Pope will be very influential. He will be the spokesperson. Whoever the Pope is at that time, it doesn't necessarily be this one. 
Whoever the Pope is at that time, I kind of think it's going to be this one because I think that we're there that close. And he will begin saying to unify the Christians by putting a mark on their head so that they can stand up say, show who they believe in. You know how you show who you believe in? Right here. Right? Well, and now here's the thing. Remember the, the unholy trinity? In the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, or Antiochus Epiphanes, or however you want to say it, out of Syria, Antiochus came, and he entered in to Israel. This is where the idea of Hanukkah came from. He took over the temple. He offered a swine on the altar to Zeus. And he made everyone in Israel, he killed them all unless they put an ivy leaf, engraved an ivy leaf in their forehead. The ivy leaf was the sign of Apollo. It was equal to the sign of the cross of Tammuz. The Antiochus Epiphanes is an exact parallel of what the latter day Antichrist will do. It literally caused them to have a mark on their forehead. And so this is, this is just a warning here. The other church fathers said this. Catholic church fathers said, Let us then not be ashamed to confess the crucified. Be the cross our seal, made with boldness by our fingers on our brow, and in everything over the bread we eat, and the cups we drink, and in our coming and our going out, before our sleep, when we lie down, and when we are awake, when we are traveling, and when we are at rest. You notice how he refers to the seal? In Revelation chapter 7, it talks about 144,000 that are, have the seal of God in their forehead. What they are going to tell you is they are fulfilling chapter 7 when they put that seal on your forehead. What they are fulfilling is Revelation chapter 13. Now, will we be here to see it? Hopefully we won't be here because the rapture will have happened. We don't know exactly when the rapture happens and when this other occurs. There's a lot of things going on. There's Islam, there's the mark of Islam, there's the mark of... Let's just just, just make it plain. Catholicism. which is the world universal church. There's the mark of the chip, the economic mark. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Isn't it interesting that all these things are going on at the same time? And how do you, how do you know which one is, is the one to stay away from? Well, of course you want to, Christians want to stay away from Islam, right? Islam wants to stay away from Christianity. They think they're safe if they have Muhammad on their head. The Christians think they're safe if they have a cross on their head. Other people think they're safe because they have a chip in their head. Don't get anything in your head. Or your hand. Now I said I was going to tell you, this one made a the one church father said that this mark is equal to or opposes the Shema. The Shema is the next slide here. How many have ever heard, Hear, O Israel, and here it says literally, here's what they say, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah, is one. Okay, that's how the that's how the Jews say that. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Right? That's how we would 
uh, the Lord is one. And you can see it literally up there. And we don't have to read all that about it, but that's what the Shema was. They would say, the Jews would say that all the time. All the time. That's what's set on, in their prayers and everything they did. They would pronounce it. In fact, the last words at the time of their death, they quote the Shema. Well, what the Catholic theologians told us in the beginning was the cross was equivalent to that, so that was our seal. The Shema was the seal for Israel, and the cross is the the seal for us. But who said that? Remember where it came from. Who does it? Catholicism does it. Is that still a seal for Israel? Huh? Is that still a seal for Israel? That's not their seal. No, that, no, no, no. That, that's just, that used to be on every house. And, well, they still have that, that on every house, on every door. And, and yeah, all over the place they have this because this is really important to uh, Orthodox Judaism. Yeah, they touch it and they, and they, they repeat that. Uh, Hero Israel, the Lord that God is one in Hebrew. Um, Here's the scripture from Ezekiel that they're going to use to try to convince you to take this. Now, this scripture, this goes back to, I mean, I read this, this must be 30 some years ago. And when I read that, as soon as I read that, it hit me, this is what they're going to use. The Holy Spirit just revealed that to me. But listen to this. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they be began at the ancient men which were before the house and it goes on but what I want you to understand is if you if you go to Ezekiel and you see what was going on God was speaking to angels and when he said go and set a mark on their forehead he was selecting them in the spirit realm and marking them who was going to be spared and God was going to slay everyone else. And it, the uh, one angel had an inkhorn. But it was all done in a spirit world. It wasn't literally where people had a mark on their head. But the, the Christian, the, the uh, false Christian church, headed up by the Pope, is going to use this very scripture telling you that this is the equivalent of Revelation chapter 7. He's setting the seal of protection upon your head. And it's a lie. That Revelation chapter 7, that doesn't apply to you. If you look, you've got to read the scripture. It says it's a 12 of the 12 tribes of Israel. It doesn't say 12 tribes of Carpentersville. Okay? It's the twelve you have to be one of the twelve tribes of Israel for even, even to be applicable, and it happens after the rapture. It has nothing to do with you. And this scripture is very it, it's similar. You have to read you, you 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 have to read the details if someone's trying to delude you. And all I'm doing here is warning, bringing out warning of of how they're going to pull this thing off. Remember the scripture, Jesus said, if it were possible, they would deceive even the elect. He says the coming of Antichrist will come with such great delusion that even the elect would be saved. Miracles! Miracles after miracles after miracles. We don't have time to get into it tonight. But there have been miracles after miracles after miracles working this delusion. How many have heard of the apparitions of Mary? Mary is the one individual who combines and unites Islam and Catholicism 
into one. You will see, another thing you're going to see are increases of apparitions of Mary. And it's going to unite this, this religion, this peaceful... How many saw the sign coexist? That's what they're trying to... The Pope wants to bond together all of these religions into one. Familiar? Does that really look Christian to you? Where did they read that in the Bible to do that? I can tell you exactly where it came from. It came from the worship of Mithra. Who in the time of Constantine was the most prominent religion and worship of the sun god in Rome. It actually started in Persia. Literally, that's what they did. They put a cross on their forehead or an X on their forehead. We're not sure what it was. But a lot of times you get that Ash Wednesday, you don't know if it's an X or a cross anyway because they just put it on there, right? The idea is where did it come from? Who told you to do that? Who told you to go into a church and put holy water on your head? I just wanted to, since this just came up again, I wanted to tell you every day she brought up in the room, and maybe it's a synod that oh, I'm in the room. They, they didn't do that with us. Maybe, maybe there is, a, you know, if it's just like a couple different, what they call it, synod. It just, when I was brought up in, we didn't do that. They didn't okay. All right. Yeah. The, um, the idea here, I mean, the ashes, that... This thing is it's arising in stages, in phases. It's coming, it'll come to its conclusion. What we have here, does anybody know what this is? This is Hinduism. You have three major religions in the world. You have Islam, you have Christianity, and you have Hinduism. Those are the three main... All of these people already mark themselves on the forehead with their God, the one they worship. This is very common, this was very commonplace. So they're, they're, they have no problem already with this. This is the worship of the, the Hindu god Shiva. Shiva is the equivalent of Satan. You see what, what he has there in the background? It's a trident. Shiva is one of their most prominent gods. He literally is equivalent to what they call, I mean, they refer to in the last days, he will come and destroy the earth. Sounds like Abaddon or Apollyon, the destroyer or destruction. Those are, his, those are names of Shiva. They literally, they, out, they, they worship outwardly this God Shiva, and you know why they do? Because they're afraid of him. They're afraid if they don't worship him, evil will come upon them. So you got a third of the religious world already accepting a mark on their forehead. No problem. You have another third, Catholicism, just about, who every Ash Wednesday allows themselves to receive a mark on their forehead. And then you have the Muslims who are putting the band on their head and, and the ring on their hand. And they're already marking themselves. Two-thirds of these people, the Muslims and the Catholics, already worship Mary. The Quran actually talks very favorably about Mary. And whoever heard of that uh, lady of Fatima? Oh. Have you heard of Fatima? You know what Fatima? You know that it's actually pronounced Fatima. Fatima was the daughter of Muhammad. When those miracles happened in Portugal, the Muslims worshipped because they thought this was apparitions of Fatima. Muhammad said. His daughter was the second most blessed woman. The Quran says the most blessed is Mary. 
It says Mary was a virgin. And Mary did give, the virgin did give birth to a son, to Jesus. And Jesus was a prophet. The Quran says all this. They deny that Jesus was the Son of God. And your Bible says, whoever denies the Son... This picture comes from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. How many have heard of the Book of the Dead? You ever seen that movie, The Mummy? Okay, they had a lot of emphasis on the Book of the Dead. You see the guy riding around in this boat. It's called a bark. This is supposed to be the god Ra. He's said to have traversed the heavens for millions of years within the bark. And we see also the Ankh in his lap. What is an Ankh? Fertility symbol. It's what? Fertility symbol. It is a fertility symbol. Now, it's very, it looks very much like a cross. It was said to represent eternal life. It was also said to have, if you had that, you had entrance into, uh, the, uh, into paradise, if you will. You would, you would uh, have eternal life if you, if you died with that ankh in your hand. They believed you could use it like a key when you went into, uh, into hell to be judged. But like Laura said, a fertility, you see, it's a cross with a head on it, isn't it? That's what an ankh is. It's a cross with a head on it. It actually represents a penis. Or a fertility. A fertility. But that's what the Ankh actually represented was a penis. Well, so we see, we see that he has an Ankh in his lap. The Ankh is the Egyptian symbol of eternal life. It is a cross with the symbol of the sun on top of it. Is really They say it's the sun, but it's also fertility. And, you know, if you go back to a lot of these ancient religions, you see that they worship penises. In fact, you go to a museum, you can see some ones that were carved and they look... Pretty much. Oh, you can see that in uh, some of the carvings inside the Egyptian tombs. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, I'm not trying to be X rated or, you know, on this or, you know, it's just these are facts. Facts are the facts. And the equivalent, somebody, you got to be careful with some of these signs. There are Christians that walk around with these things hanging off their neck. Mm-hmm. The Ankh. And they think it's just a, a form of the cross of Christ. It's a, first, it's, a, it's a sign of an Egyptian deity, is what it is. You wonder, people wonder why they bring curses and stuff into their lives. And they're fooling around with this and fooling around with that. And yes, the blood of Jesus does protect us. But that doesn't give you the... the you know, Jesus would warn you to be careful you don't just walk into the devil's playhouse because you're saved how many how many believe you you walk up to the altar and you get saved and then the next thing you go you go out to the bar and get drunk is the blood of jesus going to protect you from getting drunk or doing things under the intoxication that you shouldn't have ever done does that mean because you're saved you can go out and you can do heavy drug abuse? You can do what? this ecstasy. How, how many heard of ecstasy? Does that mean because I've got the blood of Jesus that I can take ecstasy and it won't hurt me? we got to be smart about this, right? The blood of Jesus does protect us. And if we repent, we can come back. But you go all the way back to the Old Testament. Remember when they said, put the blood on the doorposts? Whoever was in the house escaped from the destroyer. If you had blood on your house and you walked out the door and looked down the street to see what was going on, you wouldn't have made it if you were the firstborn you would have been taken by the destroyer. Even though you had the blood on your house. You don't stick your head out the window and see how far you can get away with things. 
right? Look at Lot's wife. She was supposed to be out of the city with Lot. She looked back. She did exactly what she was told not to do. Because it was her heart that dictated to look back. Look at uh, all the people in Noah's day. He preached for 120 years, it says. He preached what was coming. How many years has the church preached in your lifetime? Just in your life. How many years have you heard preachers preaching the end is near? Have we made mistakes? Yeah, we've made some mistakes. About 90, maybe, maybe we were 95% on target. Because we didn't know everything. The, uh, the one on the left, that's a, that's a uh, tau. Or tav. Tau in Greek, tav in Hebrew. It was a sign of Tammuz or Mithra. The one on the far right, that's the hammer of Thor. It was also a T or a cross. In fact, just like Jesus was the son of God, Thor was the son of Odin. Tammuz was the son of Nimrod. Apollo was the son of Zeus, right? He was the sun god, so he would be represented with the cross, with the, with the ankh, or, you know. So the one in the middle... That is the, uh, remember I talked about the ivy leaf? Mm -hmm. The ivy leaf was a representation of the mystic Tau, or the the mystic Tav, or or really the the same sign of the worship of that uh, Tammuz, or uh, how many heard of Cupid? Same thing. Cupid was Tammuz. But let me read this, and then we'll look at the question here. Um, the initiates of the mystery religion during the time of Christianity in the Roman Empire were called the soldiers of Mithra. Within this ritual, it was Mithra himself who places the mark, the mystic Tau, upon their foreheads. What you saw in the picture with everybody sitting in the pew with that mark on their head, that's exactly what Mithra, what the priest did in Mithra services. During the days of Antiochus Epiphanes, due to extreme persecution, the Jews were marked in the forehead with the engraving of the ivy leaf to show their allegiance to Bacchus. Bacchus is just another name for Tammuz. And their disowning of Yahweh, who is Jehovah. Literally, they were marked in the forehead. And We'll see this later on at some point in time, the Antiochus Epiphanes or Antiochus Epiphanes. Like I said, you, you, you're here uh, pronounced either way. But um, that comes straight out of the book of Daniel. And it is an exact pattern of what Antichrist will do in the last days. And if this was the fulfillment, he marked everybody, and then with the cross, or the you know, on their forehead, if they wouldn't get it, he slew them. Chop off their head or, or just rip them uh, with a sword up right down the middle. He killed everybody that wouldn't accept the mark. How many are glad you're going to be in the rapture? How many are glad that the people that you love are, are not going to be? Nobody should have to go through this. This deception is too great. This, this is the point. The deception, we, we, we have, it's, we've been asleep. You know, the scripture says, that tw- talks about the ten virgins. It said they all fell asleep. While they were sleeping, all this is going on, this great delusion. How are the people that don't go into rapture, how are they going to figure this out? They're going to say, oh, the Muhammad's the Antichrist. I'm going to run over to Catholic Church where I'm safe. Yeah. You're not safe. No. Oh, I'll run over to Presbyterian Church. Guess what? The Pope's getting them to join up. 
The Lutheran church, the Pope's getting them. They're reaching out to the gay churches. He's trying to get everybody to come back to Rome. And a lot of your Pentecostal preachers out there are making peace with Rome right now. You, they're, they're prophesying in the name of God, saying, Thus saith the Lord, and yet they are at complete peace with Catholicism. You need to be... The people, uh, from what I've seen, I'm going to get real icky here, gross. But when I seen what I've seen, I feel like vomiting. Because those who you would think are leaders... You would think, remember, how many, are, how many remember the days when the PTL club fell? And all the things that came out, and Jim Baker went, went to jail, remember all that? How many remember the fall of Jimmy Swagger? And how it would crush, it crushed people. It crushed their faith. Worst things are going on right now. Many of who you think are leaders are opening the doors to Chrislam. Right in front of our eyes. It's happening. It's happening. And the deception is so great. This ivy leaf, you can see the ivy around. You can see the, the ivy and the, the guy in the middle there. The ivy leaf. The ivy leaf was merely a representation of the mystic Tau. In other places, the Tau or the cross was used as a sign of Thor's protection, the hammer of Thor. In Scandinavia, they, they dug up all these crosses. They said, where did these crosses come from? And they found out they were all worship of the Son of God. Except it wasn't the Son of God who's... It was the Son of Odin. The cross was also an emblem or monogram for Jupiter. You know who Jupiter was? The equivalent of Zeus. He was the god of gods, right? How many remember this? We, we, we talked about Lilith. We talked about Lilith before. It's from Isaiah 34, 14. Lilith is a true personality. She's named and exists just like Lucifer. I'm going to read this slide here. Lilith was said to be the partner of Samil which is the devil. Lilith is described as a winged female demon who existed primarily to kill infants and endanger the lives of women who were going through childbirth. She would become what is referred to as a succubus, taking the form of a beautiful young girl, but closer inspection may reveal deformities upon her body, such as bird-like claws and serpentine tail. How many saw Medusa? Remember Medusa? She had the snakes coming out her head. That's another form of this Lilith. This Lilith exists. And, you know, I've had questions. My, I'm asking myself because I don't know the answer to this. I always wondered, was the serpent in the garden? If it was Satan, why didn't it say it was Satan? Possibly it was Lilith. It just says it was a serpent. It could have been Lilith, the counterpart. And I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. But I'm telling you, they work together. And Thyatira especially focuses on the fact that the unholy trinity is rising. Nimrod. Nimrod is equivalent to Saturn, whose name or no, name ended up being 666. Lilith is equivalent to Isis, whose name is 666. And then there you got the son Apollo, who enters into the Antichrist, into his life. And we saw the Antichrist will come out of Islam. We haven't gotten all the details. I'm just giving you a heads up here. But you can look in Daniel, you will see. The Antichrist will come right out of Syria. He will be Muslim. And the name Mohammed, 666. And the, the, the Muslims tell you when, they, when this, they call him the Mahdi. They think the Antichrist is a good guy. They think he's like the equivalent of our 
second coming of Jesus. They say that the Mahdi, which we would call the Antichrist, will be the reincarnation of Muhammad. The same spirit. Remember we talked about, remember he ascends from the bottomless pit. The spirit ascends from the bottomless pit, goes into this Antichrist, right? Remember what we said last week? The, where, where do the Muslims say the, bab, the bottomless pit is located? In Jerusalem, that mosque that sits on the Temple Mount, that is called by the Muslims the bottomless pit. It's the place where Muhammad ascended into heaven to get the Koran. He was his horse back with him. And he rode on a white horse. What comes out the first the first seal? What is it? The white horse, rider on the white horse. He comes in peace. What did he tell you Islam means? Peace. That's only people think that's now. That's only after this all takes place. And there'll be peace because everybody has to convert to Islam. He comes in peace, but by, remember what the scripture in Daniel says, Antichrist comes in peace and destroys many. Comes a time when they will say, peace, peace. And then, what? Sudden destruction. Same thing the Palestinians do to Jews right now. Yeah. And they say they want peace, they don't want peace, they want destruction. No, they, they want the dis- complete destruction. Anyway, um, I felt the, the need to cover this so you can see why this it's now as we get more into Thyatira we won't be talking about this again this gives you the foundation but it's it's all the present how did how did we get here and now we can go back and and see the rest of it of the meaning intended and then go forward but can you see how all this fits together in the great delusion that Satan is weaving? And people who have not... I mean, think about this. People have been in a church all their life, but they weren't one of the ones who were ready to go. And they ignored... They ignored the teaching. Many will call his name and say that I do this and this and this. Your name... Lord, didn't I do this, this, this? I never knew you. Yeah, exactly. But the deception has been painted like this so that the people left behind in the Great Tribulation, they won't know where to run. Now, some will. Some will miss the rapture and they will recall, my mother told me about this. There was a long time when I I was witness to about prophecy years before I became a Christian. There's a lot of people out there that heard, but they just haven't got their their game straightened out, right? There'll be a lot of people that know. But try to put yourself in, the, in, in, a, in a period where the Holy Spirit has left the earth. Remember Elvis has left the building? Yeah. The ra- what the rapture is, is the Holy Spirit's gone. Holy Spirit's up in heaven at the marriage feast of the Lamb. Because the Holy Spirit is here with us. And when we leave, guess who goes with us? If you can't find the Lord now, and you can't, you can't get your life straight out now, how are you going to do it then? And what happens is, the attention, remember the scripture in Romans says, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in and then all Israel will be saved. All the true Israel will be saved. God's going to focus attention back upon Israel the Gentiles that were going to be saved have already gone, one of two things, they're already gone up and sent it into heaven in the rapture, or they're going to stand up and give their life, stand for Jesus at that time. But it's going to be really hard 
at that time. You're not going to have a bunch of missionaries coming and teaching you. You're not going to have copies of the Bible. They're changing your Bibles. They're destroying the truth. All the stuff that's on YouTube, it won't be long and it won't be on YouTube anymore. Anything that's prophetic will be considered divisive. Do you think when the Pope gets his control that he's going to have anything on there that talks against Rome?